Hello, and welcome to the next edition of Meet the Writers with the In-Depth Genealogist. Today, I am joined with Liz Walker, and I'm very excited to have her here today. She writes our column on the Indian Territory genealogy. Welcome, Liz. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? It's good to see you, Shannon. Oh, I'm cold here in snowy Virginia, <laughs> but we're doing fine. <laughs> Now, I'm very excited to have you here today. Um, unfortunately, I have disproven all of my grandmother's stories about um, Indian princesses. We'll just put it that way. But the topic is still very interesting. Could you give the viewers a little bit of background about yourself? Um, well, I have no Indian ancestry myself. I was born in Indiana, raised in St. Louis, Missouri, um, came to Indian Territory um, in the early 80s. Um, my um, son was born here. Um, but I started working at the Genealogy Center at the Tulsa City County Library in 2000. And um, a lot of the uh, patrons that come in to do research are looking for Indian ancestry. Um, <laughs> yes. That's the majority of our, um, of our patrons. And um, most of them, I'm afraid to say, don't really find the Indian ancestry, but they do find a lot of family information. Um, uh, we have the, the Indian roles and we have access to um, some accompanying documents there at the library. Um, and I just, as I was working there, got very interested in hearing people's stories um, about their Indian ancestors and how those came about and, you know, why they'll appear on records one way and, um, you know, not the way they expect them. And so that's how I got started researching this topic. Well, that's really interesting. It's kind of like um, you just delved right into what was the local resources and made yourself an expert. Well, there are more people here in Oklahoma that are more expert than I am, but I do deal with it on a daily basis, and I feel pretty comfortable with the basic records, especially for the five civilized tribes, which are the ones that are included on a document called the Dawes Rolls. That's the primary document that you have to go back to to um, become a current tribal member for any of the five tribes. Okay, well that makes sense. Um, now, how exactly, I mean, do you have like any stories you could share with us? Because this is just a fascinating subject matter and I'm sure it's difficult to research just like a lot of people who have African American heritage. From what I understand, Indian research can be just as difficult as African American due to, you know, the way they were recorded in census records or the lack of records. Um, is that true or do you um, find that there's, uh, it's, it's not necessarily as difficult as people think it is? Well, um, the, the Indians were, especially the five civilized tribes, which are the ones I'm most familiar with, and that's the Cherokee, the Choctaw, the Chickasaw, the Creek, or Muscogee, and the Seminole. Indians. Um, those are the ones that are included on this document called the Dawes Rolls. And the Dawes Rolls was taken between 1898 and 1906 of Indians that were living here in Indian Territory, present-day Oklahoma. And they were removed from their eastern tribal lands in the 1830s. And um, they, from that time, they were pretty well documented. So people that say there's not documentation, there is documentation, especially for the five tribes, um, as long as they were living with the tribe. But the tribes themselves have said if a person leaves the tribal group at any time, they are no longer a member of the group. If you've got, say, a grandmother that married a white man, um, they left Indian Territory and went to Missouri or Texas or somewhere. Um, if she's listed as white on the census, then you're not really going to be able to go likely. So you ask of, of, of a good story? Yes. <laughs> uh, a gentleman that was coming to us for, for quite a while looking for his Cherokee ancestors, he knew that he had Cherokee blood. I think his percentage is like one sixteenth, or it's a small amount, and that's true of a lot of the Cherokee here because they were intermarried fairly early. Um, 
and he found in some of his collateral lines, not really his direct lines, but in his collateral lines, he found um, a lot of well-known Cherokees that uh, are related to his family. So he ended up writing a book that he gave to us at the library, and um, he taught us a lot of um, Cherokee background that that we hadn't really seen before. So that was fun to help him and to, and to see him grow with his uh, knowledge. Wow, that's really amazing because I, I, I don't know if there's a, I guess there's a lot of people who when they start doing ethnicity research, I guess no matter what ethnicity, just to have them come in and share their experiences and then watch them evolve as a researcher is a really great experience. It is. It is. It's fun. And when we have these regular um, patrons that come in, we get to know them very well. They're like part of the family and we enjoy, you know, working with them. And um, it's really, it's really fun. Right. It's really fun. Yeah. It's really fun to research. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's really fun to research. Um, yeah, you do. <laughs> now, I know uh the blog that you write for us isn't necessarily on Indian topics, but it That's is. Fair. But it is on various topics as well. Uh, now, do you write? Uh, it, it's basically anything that comes to your mind, or things that you're interested in, or uh, pretty much. One of the blogs I wrote was about a woman that came into the library um, who was not technically doing genealogy, but she had an old letter that uh, with a child's photograph that she found in her um, aunt's estate when she was going through her aunt's estate and didn't know who the, the man was. It was a World War II soldier that was mentioned and she didn't know who he was and we helped her make that connection and she wrote, she found living descendants. Actually, she found the, the woman who was the the child photograph, she found that woman is an adult living oh, wow. and broke too. And you know what's funny, just last week, I got um, a comment on that post on the website from a woman who's also related to that World War II soldier. So, you know, that one little story just kind of traveled all over the world. It was really fun. So that was one of my blogs, and I'm getting ready to work on one about musical ancestors so I just write about you know things that come to mind or things that I come in contact with in my work sometimes those make the best stories though <laughs> yes they do <laughs> to be so varied and to uh, and to just share the joy of research and the discovery yes yes well, I'll be they... interested to see the one on music because those um, I don't think I've ever read a blog post for genealogy about a musical discovery. Well, I have a son who's a musician, and my father was a musician, and he played in um, the the band, the Marine Corps band. He was in the, the Marine Corps between World War II and Korea. And then when I was doing research on one of my DAR lines, I found out that I have an ancestor who, who was in the Fife and Drum Corps, in the Revolutionary War, which is what my dad was in, in, in the Marines. And to have that connection between those generations, it just makes you wonder if there isn't a little something in the DNA for, oh, for that. Totally oh, just, just admit it, there totally is. There's always yeah. a line like that. Um, <laughs> now, are you in the DAR? Yes, I am. Have I you? have two proven ancestors. I've got several others that uh, that I could prove, but I just haven't gotten all the documentation have together. Have you been able to make it to Congress to see the Marine Corps band play? I have not. Oh, okay. I have not. Well, if you do let me know, I can put you up because when I was at Congress oh, cool. last year, they are amazing. Um, I actually, my parents yeah. came with uh, with me and my husband and my children, and we got to listen to the Marine Corps band play. I think it was on before f the Friday night presentation, and it was absolutely amazing. Oh, so, I bet. If you get the chance, they are well worth it. <laughs> yes. Well, I have several friends that have gone to, to Continental Congress, but I was there one year in D.C. Just, it just happened to be the week after, so I missed all the festivities, but, <laughs> well, but I'd love to come. <laughs> Good.
good luck in the future. It's it's yeah. worth it to see the Marine Corps band play. It really. Oh, is. Yeah, I bet. I would love to see that. Um, now I, I will have to tell you, there's music in my family too on both lines, which is why I said it's in the DNA. Just give it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but my 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 mother, I'm going to tell you this because it'll make you laugh since you're from a musical family. Um, she, my mother's about five foot two, and in high school marching band, she played the sousaphone. You know, oh, the big one that comes uh-huh. up. Uh-huh. Well, my mother played cymbals. Yes. She played the big cymbals. That's how she met my dad. Well, <laughs> the, the funny thing is I have a picture of my mom. I'll have to find it now. I don't know where it is, but it's around here somewhere where the instrument is as tall as she is. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I tell people that. Why did she pick the biggest instrument? <laughs> Probably to prove a point, but well, maybe. <laughs> but I just had to, to share that because I always find it amusing. Well, before we close today, is there anything you want to share with the audience? A tip, trick, website, or book that you think that if they are interested in doing Indian Territory genealogy research, that they should have access to or at least be familiar with? One of the best websites is the Oklahoma Historical Society website, Um, and I don't have their address right handy, but if you Google uh, Oklahoma Historical Society, um, it'll pop up, and they have an index to the Dawes Rolls, if you think you have someone that might be on the Dawes Rolls. There's also um, a book, and I don't know if it's still in print or not, but it's called The Dawes Commission. It's written by Ken. Commission and why people are on it and why other people are not on it. Um, he uh, used to be at the uh, Southwest Regional Archives of the National Archives. Um, so I'd certainly recommend those things and, and also to put in a plug for the library I work at, the <laughs> um, Tulsa Library. It's tulsalibrary.org forward slash genealogy. That'll get you to the Genealogy Center page. And we do have a link actually to the um, Oklahoma Historical Society as well as to the five tribes and there um, there are some videos there and some handouts from some of our programs that will give you a good start in finding your Indian ancestor. Great, great. Well, thank you so very much for being on today. We really appreciate it and I'm sure the audience has enjoyed getting to know you a little bit better too. Well, thank you. I enjoyed doing it. Great. Now, for everyone else out there, please make sure that you check out our website, www.theindepthgenealogist.com, where you can read all about Liz's blogs and subscribe to our magazine to continue to read her column on Indian tribes. Until next time, have a great day and go in-depth with all of your ancestors.